Hey what's up you guys, it's Spartan and today I'll be talking to you guys about the new Highland Sword that was just added in in the new update for Chivalry 2. So in this video I will be covering everything there is about this sword and going into a complete in-depth dive into all of its different stats. So I will be covering its damage, its times to hit, and its times to recover for every single different type of attack, as well as its length, its range, and its overall scoring compared to every other weapon in Chivalry 2. So let's go ahead and jump straight into its stats. Alright, so first off, how you unlock the Highland Sword is through the Vanguard Devastator class. So it will be the very last unlockable weapon out of that weapon tree. And for its stated stats in game, it says it has an increased damage output at a cost of longer release, and it has a slower wind up speed and a longer recovery time. So overall, out of all my stats I did, this does match up. So the in game stats it tells you it does seem to be actually accurate this time. Alright, so for the best aspect of this weapon, it's damage. So the Highland Sword comes in at having 65 slash damage, 85 overhead damage, and 40 stab damage. So overall, I recommend using that overhead light attack for this weapon, as well as avoiding the stab attacks at all costs for this weapon. And also, it's worth mentioning this is a slashing weapon, and it does not have any bonuses to knights, so this weapon will do best against unarmed vanguard units. And for its heavy variance of its attacks, it comes in at having 85 slash damage for a heavy slash, 100 heavy overhead damage, and 60 heavy stab damage. As well as for its specials, it comes in at having 60 damage for your spinning attack, as well as 100 damage for its running sprint attack. Alright, so now on to the most interesting aspect of the Highland Sword. It's times to hit and it's times to recover, so it's overall speed. So out of every other weapon on this list, the speed makes this the most unique weapon out of every weapon in Chivalry 2. So it is one of the most unwieldy weapons in this entire game and its speed is just absolutely terrible. So for its times to hit, it takes 970 milliseconds, so nearly a full second for a slash to hit, and it takes 1070 milliseconds for an overhead and 970 milliseconds for a slash. So all your attacks on average will take nearly an entire second to hit in a target, which is about double every single one-handed weapon in this game. And interestingly enough, it's heavy variants of each attack, so it's heavy slash, it's heavy overhead, and it's heavy stab, all came in at taking 1,180 milliseconds to hit in a target. So everything was exactly equal in how long it took to hit in a target for heavy variants of those attacks, which was really weird to see. All right, on to its other speed stat. It's time to recover speeds. So for its time to recover for a slash, it takes 1180 milliseconds, its overhead takes 1070 milliseconds, and its stab takes exactly 1000 milliseconds. So this by far is the slowest weapon in all regards compared to every other weapon in this game. And it takes over a second to both hit in a target, as well as recover from that hit and block afterwards. And for its heavy variance, its heavy slash came in at 1270 milliseconds, and its heavy overhead came in at 1270 milliseconds as well. And then for its heavy stab, interestingly enough, it was still 1000 milliseconds. So overall, the heavy stabs and the light stabs are actually pretty quick compared to the other different types of attacks for this weapon, and could potentially catch someone off guard, but still it is extremely slow for a stab. Honestly, I would recommend using heavy slashes in a group of people and spinning around in a circle versus actually using the spinning special attack. And for its special spin, it came in at having 1700 milliseconds to recover, which is just absolutely insane. That is nearly two seconds to recover after a hit. And for the special jump, it only takes 800 milliseconds to hit your target. So if you want to hit someone extremely quickly and catch someone off guard, the sprinting jump overhead attack is actually the best way to go for this weapon and does 100 damage so it's pretty impressive 100 damage for only taking 800 milliseconds is pretty good compared to all the other different types of attacks for this weapon so i do highly recommend using the special jump attack but avoid using the spinning attack at all costs because it is extremely slow and does next to no damage all right so overall this weapon comes in at having an average hit and recovery speed of 2.14 seconds and an average damage output at 85 making it have a dps of 40 which comes in at 13th place compared to every other weapon in chivalry 2. 
as well as it also has a length of 7 feet which is just absolutely insane and literally dwarfs every other weapon in this game besides the two-handed spear and the halberd and has a range of 10 feet because of the fully extended animations while attacking with this weapon. So you can potentially hit people 10 feet away from your character which is really really nice considering that you can have wide sweeps that do 85 damage to every single person around you. Oh, I also wanted to mention the historic length of the Highland Sword is only 4 feet, and in-game it is 7 feet, which is just absolutely insane. I mean, this thing literally would weigh 20 to 30 pounds in this game, and would be completely unwieldy to use. So honestly, in order to wield this weapon, your character has to be on some major vitamins in order to get the strength to wield this weapon. I thought that was just something interesting to mention, that the historic length is literally half the size in-game. Alright, so what you guys all have been waiting for this entire video, it's overall ranking and it's scoring compared to every other Chivalry 2 weapon. So the Highland Sword came in at being the 13th best weapon in Chivalry 2, which makes it a good weapon but not the greatest and by no means overpowered. So this weapon absolutely excels at wiping out large groups of enemies, but in a 1v1 situation this weapon severely lacks and will get easily overwhelmed by a one-handed sword or a one-handed weapon. So overall this weapon is extremely long and does a crap ton of damage, but it is by far the slowest weapon in this entire game. And because of its insanely slow times to hits and times to recovery speed, this weapon comes in as the 13th best weapon in Chivalry 2. Oh, and just for a reference of how slow this weapon truly is, the maul in this game actually came in at 1.83 seconds for a hit and recovery speed. Compare that to the this Highland Sword that's 2.14 seconds. So the Highland Sword is actually an entire half second slower than the second slowest weapon in this entire game, which is just absolutely insane. I mean, it is completely an outlier compared to every other weapon for how slow it is. So you basically just have to be extremely cautious with how slow this weapon is and know how long it takes to hit someone. So for example, if you are attacking someone, and you land a hit on them and they have a one-handed weapon, they can immediately hit you after you're recovering and going into your second attack. So this weapon is so slow, people can attack you while you're hitting them. So with this weapon, you're basically going to be wanting to stay out of range of the enemy and dodging attacks as well as blocking every single attack that comes to you. Do not expect your attack to hit before their attack hits you. Oh, and as a little tip for those who plan on using this weapon or are currently using this weapon to fight, if you are in a 1v1 situation, I highly recommend after you hit an opponent immediately going into a block and then attacking as soon as you go into a block. So if you keep spamming this over and over, you should cut your recovery time down by over a half. Now it will cost more stamina to do this, but your speed to recover should be cut in half and you will be less exposed to counter attacks after you miss an attack or after you hit someone. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed that in-depth dive into the Highland Sword. And if you guys want to see more in-depth dives into every other weapon in this game, make sure to go check out the top 10 best weapons in Chivalry 2, as well as the top 10 worst weapons video I made on this game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Spartans.